How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode and welcome back to part 2 of learning how to use regex in Barrow Trauma. In the previous video we talked about character classes, what regex means and some websites you can test this on. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check that out and then come back to this one. Today's video is about quantifiers, but it is also good to know how to combine them with character classes. Because one of the most common uses for regex in the game is finding a range of numbers, like between 0 to 100. So I'll show you how we do that near the end of the video. You can also skip straight there on the timestamp if you already know these basic definitions. So first up, we have the asterisk, or the star symbol, which is very useful for finding something that doesn't have to be there, but it can be in any quantity. So for example, I have 1001 as my input, and I want my regex to be able to pass that number. So if I do 1001, this will automatically pass because that's exactly what I'm looking for. However, if I changed my input to say 10001, this will fail. So how do I get the regex to make this work? By using the asterisk. So when I put the star symbol in and do this, it will pass. So the star is actually allowing any number of zeros to exist between the two ones. A single zero and it still passes. In fact, I don't need to have any zeros and it will still pass. The thing is, I can't put any other number there. So if I put a two, it will fail because the requirement in regex is that it must have either zeros or nothing at all between the two ones. And the beauty of this is I can have as many zeros as I want. So I can have a whole bunch of zeros in here. And when I hit enter, it will still pass. This next symbol is very similar to the previous one. The plus sign is more restricted. It accepts at least one character or more. So this is useful in situations where you need at least one character. For example, back to our 1001, if I were to change the regex and put a plus instead of an asterisk, this will pass because we have at least one zero in our input. But if I change the input to say 101, this should still pass and it does because it has at least one zero. The only way this is going to fail is if I remove that zero altogether. So you can see it fails there. And as usual, I can have as many zeros as I want, and it will pass, as long as you have at least one. Now this next symbol is a little bit tricky to explain. The question mark is known as an optional quantifier, but depending on where you put it in the syntax, it could behave very differently to what you would expect. In its simplest form, all it does is allow a character to be there or not there. So it makes the character optional. For example, if I change the regex here, remove the plus, but put a question mark, this will fail because we have too many zeros in our input. And this is only allowing one zero at most to exist. So if I change the memory to say only 101, this will pass. It's allowed to have one zero. And if I remove the zero altogether, it's still okay. We're allowed to have no zeros because the question mark allows a maximum of one. If I were to put another zero with another question mark, this means that you can have two optional zeros between your two ones. So now one and one works. So does 101, because the second zero is also optional, and I can have the second zero there and it still passes. If, however, I put another zero in there, it will fail. Or if I put a two in there, it will still fail, because if it's gonna be anything, it has to be a zero. And I won't get too much into this right now, but it can be really confusing when you start to combine the question mark with other symbols. It changes the meaning of the question mark to some extent. For example, if your input has four A's in it, and your regex is A+, regex will be satisfied when it matches all four A's together. But if you put a question mark at the end of this, it becomes a lazy quantifier, meaning regex is now happy to accept just the first A because the plus means you need at least one and it doesn't care about the rest of them because it's lazy. So depending on how you use this question mark, you can get very different outcomes. If you want to understand more about how the question mark is used, then I strongly recommend to test this out on regex101.com or regexr.com because they give you a few explanations and show you some simulations on what could happen. This next symbol is much easier to understand. When you have a character like A, followed by a pair of curly braces with a number inside it. This informs regex that you're trying to find the letter A as many times as the number you described. So this is looking for consecutive repetitions of the same thing. For example, if my input is 1AAA1, I can make this pass by doing 1AAA1 or curly brace 3 right after the first A and it will still pass. If I change this 3 to a 2, it won't pass because it needs only it needs two A's. If I make this four, 
then it will fail still because it requires four A's. So it is very strict and very rigid, but this is where this next symbol comes in. It's just a variation of the same thing. All you do is put a comma after the number. What this means is you need to have at least three A's. So back to our example, if I were to change this and put a three and then put a comma, this passes because we have at least three A's. If I were to change the three to a two, it passes now because I have a comma there saying that you need to have at least two A's. We have three in our input, so it's fine. However, if I made this four comma, it will fail still because we don't have four A's. We need to have at least four A's in there for this to work. So if I change the memory input and put another A in there, then it passes. If you wanted to have an upper limit on how many of the same thing you see, then all you need to do is put another number after the comma. So three comma six would accept anything with three, four, five, or six A's. For example, my input has four A's, and if I were to put three to six, this will pass because we have between three to six A's in there. If I were to lower this limit to four, three to four, then it still passes because we have up to four A's in there. If however, I change this range and said, two to three, it will fail because we have too many A's in there now, right? We have four A's, but it only accepts up to three A's. Now, like I said at the start of this video, one of the most common uses for regex is to find a range of numbers. And you can do this by combining character classes with quantifiers. For example, if I wanted my regex to accept anything between zero and nine, all I need to do is make sure the regex says bracket zero to nine, and this will pass any single digit that I throw in here. And in fact, I can put anything before or after that, and it will still work because I just need to have a single digit in there. However, if I wanted to accept at least two digits, put another zero to nine after the first one, and now you can type in two digits and it will work. The thing is, it will not accept single digits because it needs at least two digits now. If you wanted to make it optional to still accept a single digit, then you would go back to your regex and preferably select the first bracket and put a question mark right after that. This means that the first digit is optional while the second digit must exist. So you can have zero or five or even 43 and it will pass. In fact, you can have triple digits and it's still fine and you can put letters after that as long as there is at least one digit ex in existence somewhere, if not two digits. And if you strictly wanted to make this accept triple digits and nothing less, then rather than doing zero to nine three times in a bracket, you could just put a curly brace with a three at the end of it, and this will accept anything that is at least three digits and more. So if I did a single digit, it will fail. If I did two digits, it still fails. If I put a third digit, it passes. If I put a fourth digit, it also passes. And if I wanted to stop it from accepting anything beyond three digits, I can't just put a comma three here because all this is doing is telling regex to find something with three digits together. And yes, there are three digits together. You can either take one, two, three or two, three, four. So regex still thinks this is fine. The only way to force regex to accept three digits strictly and nothing more is to use anchors or have other numbers in front or behind it that would restrict how the input should look. But we'll talk about anchors in the next video. And finally, if you wanted to just accept anything from zero to 100, then doing zero to nine three times is not good enough because that means you can't use single or double digits. You'd have to make the first and the second bracket optional. So if we were to test this out now and just do one, two, three, passes, one and two passes, and so does one. If I removed any of those question marks, this will immediately fail for single digits. It'll still pass for two digits, but then the same problem occurs if I remove the other question mark as well, because this only accepts three digits and above. Okay, so that's it for the video. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know down in the comments below. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out. <laughs> That's a good one.